a friendly message by Dr. Zakir, the last testament of God. It is a proclamation to humanity, a fountain of mercy and wisdom, a guide to the erring, a warning to the heedless, an assurance to those in doubt, a solace to the suffering, a hope to those in despair. Al-Quran, the most positive book in the world, the final message of God to humanity. Let's read it, understand it, and follow it. Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Stay away from the major sins Ignore the whispers of the Shia tent Oh Lord, have mercy on our souls Stay away, stay away from the major sins Ignore the whispers of the Shia tent Oh Lord, have mercy on our souls Oh Lord بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين ورحمة الله للعالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All the praise and all the glory is due to Allah And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his last prophet and messenger May the blessings and peace of Allah be upon our prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His family, his companions and those who follow his path up to the day of judgment. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome back to a new episode of Healing Hearts. In Healing Hearts, we are exposing and elaborating the basic pitfalls and defects of the heart and how to overcome them so that we will get clean, purified, and rectified hearts that are qualified better stand in front of Allah on the day of a judgment where only a sound heart will benefit a believer and one of the basic problems that a sound heart faces in this life is the eternal enemy which is appointed restlessly and poselessly which works day and night 24-7 it is the shaitan, the satan through its insinuations that doesn't leave the son of Adam until he casts him into the hellfire and to be proud on the day of a judgment that he led those people into the hellfire and then he will take off his hand and responsibility of them. The influence of the shaitan on the heart is immense because the heart is a place of the insinuations of the shaitan and it is the resting place for the mercies of the Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. So the Prophet ﷺ was commanded in the Quran to seek refuge in Allah from the insinuations of the Satan. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of the people. Malikin nas, the king of mankind. Ilahi nas the deity or the God of the mankind. Min sharril waswasi al khannas From the evil of the insinuating whisper. Alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas who whispers into the hearts of people. Min al jinnati wa nas from among the jinn and mankind. So there is no exception of the insinuations of the shaitan. He tries his best through those types of insinuations. And he goes in every single inch of a sons of Adam body. This is the reason the Messenger وسلم, said in the authentic hadith, So the Prophet وسلم, said, 
Shaitan gets to everywhere in a man. That blood gets to and feared that he might cast something in your hearts. Prophet ﷺ was afraid that something is cast in the heart of the two companions who saw him when the Prophet ﷺ was one of the nights of I'tikaf in the last ten nights of Ramadan. And he was standing with one of his wives. So two of the companions saw the Messenger ﷺ. The Prophet called upon them and said, This is Safiya, my wife because he was afraid that those Sahaba may cast doubt about the Prophet Sallallahu so they will be destroyed because it's a big problem. So the Prophet Sallallahu tried to clear himself out of sympathy for those companions. And he said the statements, the shaitan gets to everywhere in a man that his blood gets to. All of what we are talking about is a part of the unseen, things that we cannot physically see. But the Prophet ﷺ has informed us about that through authentic hadith. And believing in the shaitan, the Satan, all of those things is a necessity because it is mentioned in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Quran has explicitly mentioned that he sees us in a way that we cannot physically see him and his followers, of course. So the Prophet ﷺ informed us that the shaitan sometimes rests even in the noses. This is the reason that when a person gets up early in the morning, it's preferable for him to exaggerate cleaning his nose. And this is a way that he tries to expel the shaitan's influence, especially at the early time of the morning when a person receives his day and he starts actually making qiyam al And there is another hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa that the shaitan ties three knots in every person's neck. And when a Muslim starts getting up and he mentions the name of Allah, one of those three knots are being loosened. When he starts making ablution and prayers, the second and the third knots are being loosened. And then a person becomes active, energetic throughout the whole of his day. Otherwise, the shaitan starts when a person wants to get up early in the evening to make some prayers of Qiyamul Layl. The shaitan insinuates in the heart of a person saying, Don't get up, sleep, you have a long night to spend. And he starts insinuating until the shaitan makes a person misses that precious prayer. And in fact, a lot of people miss those golden minutes and seconds where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends to the earth in a way that suits His Majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala and He calls upon His servants, whoever has a need to ask a dua that I may respond to him and whoever seeks after my forgiveness, I'm going to forgive him. The shaitan makes us lose those precious minutes and seconds during the last sixth of the night. So when a person misses that salah, and he sometimes misses salat al-fajr, the Prophet ﷺ gave us an example by saying it is, he will get up, the son of Adam will get up, as if exactly like the shaitan has urinated in his ears. So he becomes very gloomy, sad in the morning, in a very bad temper, and bad mood. He cannot react with others. He is pessimistic, he is not doing well, so this is part of the influence that the shaitan tries to practice on the heart of a believer. And I need to concentrate that there are three components which in fact affect the heart of a believer. On the top of them is the shaitan, the Satan. And number two, the internal soul. And number three, Nafs and the inclination, what you can call the whims and desires which are embedded in the heart of the son of Adam. So the shaitan, the soul, and those whims and desires can grow up if a person doesn't have a full control over them. So what we need to know, how to get the entrances of the shaitan into our bodies and into our hearts 
and how to give up and to make a blockage and immunity system to our hearts. Number one, the causes of committing any sins or any problems are actually three. Number one, the external senses, which are like the eyes, the ears, the nose, the hands, all those organs are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to function properly. And they are guided by the heart. So if a person doesn't have full control and discipline of those senses, they can be released without any type of discipline or any type of scrupling them. So when a person doesn't have an end to the useless glances here and there, or the vicious appetite that he consumes food, halal and haram, whatever, this has a very bad effect. When a person sees a woman, for example, and then you start thinking about her, and then the steps of the shaitan works out to lead him finally to commit fornication or adultery. This is a step. It starts actually with the senses. So a person should have the responsibility of guarding his eyes, his ears, and all of his actions so that it will not try to destroy him. And the second cause of problems that actually affect sins and make the heart corrupt are the internal causes of whims and desires which are embedded in the heart themselves and they had effect. Because every person has the capability either to commit a mistake to sin or to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, the uh, thoughts that goes on and are exposed to the heart. Because when you are alone and you start thinking, those thoughts pass by your heart and they may grow up into actions. Like for example, when a person thinks about food, so he stands up and he starts searching for food. If a person thinks about a woman, a beautiful woman that goes up on his mind, and then he stands up searching for that woman, and then it goes up and it drags him to a lot of situations. Again, so we have three basic reasons of falling into haram. Number one, the senses. Number two, the internal whims and desires which are included in a person's heart. And number three, the thoughts that are exposed to his brain and to his mind, and then he reacts to them. We will continue talking about the shaitan's influence after having this short break i will leave you so stay with us and we will be back assalamu alaikum stay away from the lake and all the whispers of the shayatin marriage or divorce what's islamic ruling solution or problem heaven or hell uh, there is a misconception you choose Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half. Every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. We are not addicted to Dawa. Addiction implies a short-term fix. One doesn't need to get into the zone to talk about Islam. You do da'wah because it is a natural result of your commitment to Allah. If you don't talk, people are going to walk. The most effective combination in the propagation of true Islam is found in Dawa Ilullah. Join me, Arib Islam, as we go through Dawa Ilullah only on Peace TV. Follow the tips to make the task of Dawa result oriented in Dawa Ilallah next on Peace TV. Stay away from the lake, 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In every single heart of a believer or a disbeliever, there are two inclinations or two types of insinuations. Number one, it may be actually good or it may be bad. So sometimes when you are standing or sitting alone, you are thinking actually of making something good, of standing up and making charity, or you are thinking about something positive and proactive, being nice, talking good way, calling your father or your mother to maintain the relations of kith and kin, etc. And in some other cases, you have inclinations to do what is bad. So you start of stealing, you start of committing haram, following this and that, or backbiting, gossiping, etc. So what is the explanation of that phenomenon? The scholars said, out of reading the hadith of the Messenger وسلم, that every person has two basic inclinations. The first inclination, it is like positive and proactive and righteous inspiration, which is cast into the heart, which commands him to do good and which forbids him to do evil. This inspiration is called ilham. They call it ilham. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that in the authentic hadith. And he said, إِنَّ لِلشَّيْطَانِ لَمَّةً بِبْنِ آدَمْ وَلِلْمَلَكِ لَمَّةً فَأَمَّا لَمَّةُ الشَّيْطَانِ فَإِعَادٌ بِالشَّرِّ وَتَكْذِيبٌ بِالْحَقِّ وَأَمَّا لَمَّةُ الْمَلَكِ فَإِعَادٌ بِالْخَيْرِ وَتَصْدِيقٌ بِالْحَقِّ So the Prophet ﷺ said, the shaytan has an effect on the son of Adam. And the angel has also an effect on the son of Adam. As for the shaytan, it is by threatening evil and repercussion and rejecting the truth. And as for the angel, it is by his promise of good and believing in the truth. Whoever finds that, he should actually seek Allah's refuge from the shaytan and he should actually praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he finds in his heart. According to this hadith, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that there are inspirations which come direct from an angel and insinuations which come direct from the shaitan. So when a person finds the shaitan insinuating and one of the signs that it commands him to do evil or to do what is wrong, he should actually remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah mentioned in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِّنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا Those of the believers, when there is insinuation of the shaitan passes by their hearts, they remember Allah. So they return in repentance and they try to fix themselves. The solution is to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaitan start up of making wudu and making two rak'ats and seeking help and support from Allah. Because definitely Allah is going to support and help you if you sincerely return to Him in that situation. But if you find the inspirations of the angel, so you need to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and go ahead in doing what is righteous because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to write it down as a one-fold deed according to the authentic hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The shaitan has a lot of ways to get into the heart of the son of Adam. And understanding those entries of the shaitan and plans and plots will definitely help us to overcome them. So one of the most important entries of the shaitan, it is envy and greediness. When a person becomes greedy, and envies other people, and it actually deeply affects him, because the Prophet ﷺ, according to the authentic hadith of Zubayr ibn al-Awwam, that the Prophet ﷺ said, Dabba ilaykum da'ul umam. The disease of the previous nation has already crept into you. What are these diseases that are actually inherent of the previous nation or messenger of Allah? He said, Al-Hasad, envy, Number two, al-baghda, hatred. And he said this is al-haliqa. Haliqa means something which shaves. And he says it doesn't shave the hair, but it shaves the religion. 
which means it eradicates a religion by all. It eradicates righteousness. It uproots the seeds of goodness in the heart of the son of Adam. So when the shaitan smells the heart of the son of Adam, this is a fact because the shaitan draws closer to his chest and to his heart. He starts to smell it. And if he finds that heart is actually ready to fall into haram, so the shaitan actually starts working on it tremendously. So the Prophet ﷺ said that when a person is greedy enough, when a person wants this and that and all of what is available in front of him, when he sees everybody, he want to be in his shoes and he want to be actually his personality, his fame, his reputation, his health, his wealth. So he wishes and desires everybody's capabilities. And he forgets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has distributed those provisions and sustenance on all people. And he gave everybody whatever he deserves and whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested him accordingly. So greediness makes a person think about others. So we start to be rebellious against the fate and predestination of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against the will of Allah. So is displeased with what Allah has given him. So in this way, he starts actually making envy against others and he starts to acquire whatever is prohibited and it's not prohibited. So in this way, he starts to accumulate this dunya and the vanities of this life without accountability. And this is one of the diseases and this is one of the avenues of how the shaitan gets into the heart. The second thing which actually makes the shaitan very accessible to enter into the heart and affect it deeply is actually anger. Anger is very effective because when a person is angry, he starts to making mistakes and he doesn't know. He starts slapping and insulting using his hand and his leg and started talking and gossiping. He starts to actually talk without any control on himself. So he falls definitely into what is wrong and what is haram. So that's why the shaitan goes to the son of Adam through ghadab, through anger. This is the reason when a man came to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, give me an advice. And he said, Don't be angry. And he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, please give me a special advice. And he said, Don't be angry. And the man came to the Prophet ﷺ for the third time and he repeated the third advice, that's the same advice, for the third time. Don't be angry. So the scholars explain this hadith in different ways. Some of them said that how cannot be angry because actually this is something which is latent, something which is built in the heart. It's built in the soul. How can I get rid of things which is inherent in me? And others said that no, it is timable. Because knowledge is acquired by learning and hilm forbearance is actually acquired by training yourself to be forbearing for others. So it is the same. And other scholars said that it is not possible but the Prophet ﷺ meant in that context that don't act while you are angry or in a state of anger. So when you are standing, if you sit down, you should actually in this way lie down, whatever. You have to change your position. So the shaitan goes into the son of Adam through anger. And it goes into the son of Adam through also the shahwa, the desire, the latent desire which is in his heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, very eloquent ayah, which he said, زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ وَالْقَنَاطِيرِ الْمُقَنْطَرَةِ مِنَ الذَّهَبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ وَالْقَيْلِ الْمُسَوَّمَةِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ Beautified to the sons of Adam or to people, love of desires of women and sons and daughters and accumulated hubs of money and jewelry, of gold and silver and branded horses and cattle and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the ayah says that's the enjoyment of the worldly life but Allah has with him the best return. So one of the important influential 
entries of the shaitan is to go through those attractions. When you look at a woman and then you start following her and thinking about her, when you see branded corn, you start actually thinking how to get it, either it's halal or haram. This inherent love in the heart of loving those beautified things and look at the expression of the Quran, those things are not inherently beautiful because they don't have eternal state of beauty. It is actually changeable and transcendental. It's temporary. This is the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, beautify to men or beautify to people. So they are made to seem beautiful, alluring, seducing, attracting. But in reality, those things do not have eternal happiness. This is the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that is the enjoyment of the worldly life. So whoever gives a room for wishing and desiring all those things which are made beautified to him, he falls into the trap of the shaitan. And the shaitan starts actually working on him through those well-known items. When a person is being attracted to those things, the shaitan starts to drag him into what is prohibited. So finally, it is just a vanity of this life. So these are some of the avenues of the shaitan. We will elaborate them in the next episode, inshallah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy upon all of us and to bless us and to shun the whisperings of the shaitan and his evil insinuations. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Stay away, stay away from the major sins. Ignore the whispers of the shaitans. Oh Lord, have mercy on our souls. Stay away, stay away from the major sins. Ignore the whispers of the shaitans. Oh Lord, have mercy, have mercy on our souls. Oh Lord, have mercy on our souls. Have mercy on our souls. Stay away, stay away from the major sins. Ignore the whispers of the shaitans. Oh Lord. It's time is very precious. This life is a gift from Allah. Utilize this gift for here and hereafter. Enjoy this gift in the light of the Quran and Hadith. Enjoy Islam with us, Zain and Dawood. Enjoying Islam with Zain and Dawood every Monday at 7.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 10.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Oh. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY 30008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity.